Rosario. Here. Miss O'Brien. Here. Mr. Stefanczyk. Here. Mr. Bender. Mr. Arteague. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. You have a quorum. Okay, I need a motion to table the first uh, item under presentations. Second by Mr. Groby. Vote with your lights, please. Mr. Belisario. Mr. Dean. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay, second item. Presentation of certificate of recognition of achievement for excellence in financial reporting by Government Finance Officers Association. I believe we have a Mr. Paul Rivera here. Uh, he is Chief Financial Officer, Jefferson Parish, Parish Sheriff's Office, is going to make the presentation on behalf of the association. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Brister. Good evening. Uh, again, my name is Paul Rivera. I'm the Secretary Treasurer of the Louisiana Government Finance Officers Association. And tonight I'm proud to announce that a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting is being awarded to the St. Tammany Parish Council by the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada for its comprehensive annual financial report for the year ended December 31st, 2010. I believe this is the eighth year in a row that you've got the certificate. Um, the Certificate of Achievement is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by government and its management. The achievement should not be taken lightly. In 2010, only 48 governments in the state of Louisiana actually received the award. And in fact, only 11 of the 64 parishes get the Certificate of Achievement. Uh, to receive the award, um, St. Tammy's CAFR was reviewed by an impartial panel to determine if it met the high standards of the program and demonstrated the spirit of full disclosure in communicating the financial history and activity to the citizens and other report users. Certificate is given great weight by the firms on Wall Street, typically results in better bond ratings, and ultimately saves the citizens money on the back end. Uh, this award is hereby presented to Leslie Long, Director of Finance for St. Tammany Parish. President Bis Brister, do you have something to say? Well, obviously, I would love to take credit for all of this, but I don't. <laughs> Leslie and her, her team have been doing such a spectacular job, and I couldn't be prouder to be a part of this parish and, and see the work that they, they do produce. And as was mentioned, eight years in a row. That's quite a record, and we're very proud of you, Leslie. And thank you. Thank you. Would you like to Leslie? Mrs. Long? Um, I was just going to mention, I just want to thank the administration and the council because y'all have been very supportive of our department and making sure that we had the sufficient staff, you know, to do this. And also, without the help of all the component units, which is every fire district, recreation district, sewer and water districts um, in the parish, they all have to get their financial statements to us early so that we can then incorporate them into our report. So without their assistance, we wouldn't be able to do this either. And um, certainly, Laura Wren in our department, this is um, her project every year. And she started it uh, eight years ago, and um, we've been fortunate enough to receive this award all eight years. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I need a motion to move up. Uh, well, actually, a motion to open up the off the floor so items. Moved. Second by Mr. Falconer. Vote with your lights to open up, and this has to be unanimous. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, I need a motion to move up item number six, resolution stating that the parish council support for including, uh, excuse me, that's not number the item. Seven. Yeah. It's number seven. Uh, discussion of severe traffic hazard, St. Tammany Parish residents traveling the morning commute to the, uh, on the uh, Lake Pontchartrain Causeway due to poor intersection management at 6th Street and the Causeway Boulevard in Jefferson Parish while road work continues. This is uh, Mr. Falco. You got a motion to move it up? So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Stefanczyk. Vote with your lights to move it up. We need to clear the machine. Motion is unanimous. Two absent. Mr. Falconer. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I ask that this item be added to our off the floor agenda, uh, primarily because of the number of responses or complaints that I've received from my constituents about the condition of traffic on the causeway and um, my personal experience of having driven across the causeway at peak traffic time and experienced a considerable amount of delay at the south end of the bridge. The um, delay is being caused apparently by the, um, by the construction that's ongoing, um, improving the uh, levees there in Jefferson Parish, which is all a good and necessary work, but the, um, the project, the way it's being operated right now is causing this delay on the bridge, um, not caused by a bottleneck on the causeway itself, but primarily because of the operation of the light at 6th Street and Causeway Boulevard. The, uh, the math in the situation is really pretty simple. There's about 20,000 vehicles of southbound commuters that cross the causeway each day. Uh, during peak traffic hours, there's about 3,000 vehicles southbound crossing the causeway. And during that peak hour, only about 550 vehicles uh, access Lakeway Complex by turning left at 6th Street and crossing Causeway Boulevard. Uh, the project has been um, causing tremendous delays to those 3,000 cars on the bridge at that peak traffic time uh, to accommodate those 500 cars making the left turn that have an alternative uh, access uh, venue via uh, Severn Avenue in the back. So I, uh, tonight we've got Carlton Dufer show and a couple of members of the public that would like to address this. So I'd like to turn the table over and reserve a little time to make a motion at the end. Members of the council, uh, President Brister, thank you for Welcome. the opportunity to, to, to join you this evening. Uh, Councilman Falconer is exactly correct. These, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, the delays that we're experiencing southbound right now in the morning are the worst in the 56 year history of the Causeway Bridge, with the exception of, of a couple of very bad accidents. What's happened, is, as Reed said, is it's, uh, it's the worst of the case uh, situations we, we feared with the project early on. Fortunately, because the contractor, Bow Brothers, and the Corps of Engineers were actually very progressive. They changed their sequence of construction for the first year to avoid the delays we're experiencing right now. But in December, we lost the third stacking lane at the exit, the toe of the, of the bridge on the south shore because the new flood wall uh, across Causeway Boulevard is being constructed. That induced the backups on the bridge that we're seeing every morning now. Uh, on average, they're at least four miles back on the bridge. The worst we've, we've seen were actually eight miles over the, the southbound navigation channel on two instances last week. Jefferson Parish has been receptive. They've been proactive. They've allowed us, our police officers, to start managing the signal light on the south shore from 6 a.m. until 10 a.m. every morning, which, while it doesn't seem like much, we actually think it is helping the, the traffic exit. They're giving us, we're giving as much green time as we can. However, they've made it very clear that we should not allow any traffic to block, northbound traffic to block West Esplanade Avenue going north, whether it's to the Lakeway building or any other the, the businesses around that area. So we do have to allow traffic into Lakeway. The one alternative that remains, and this is a tough one, uh, it is, uh, it's, it's no engineering solutions anymore. It's unfortunately a, a uh, direction from Jefferson Parish would be either to shut down the green signal on at 6th Street and Causeway, allow it to be green from 7.30 until 8.30 in the morning southbound, which is a, obviously a very hard decision for anyone in Jefferson Parish. The other one which we are trying to do right now is ask Jefferson Parish to just ask all of the folks that are going north to please use the alternate route into Lakeway. Use West Esplanade to Severn Avenue while, yes, that will induce backups that way and would allow more green time on the south shore. The, on the positive side of this, uh, Bow Brothers has again come, and come to the plate for us. They are accelerating, rebuilding that exit lane, the, the, at least a portion of the third uh, exit lane for us. That, the first 30%, 30 to 40% of that should be complete by March 9th. That will probably reduce the delays on the bridge by five to seven minutes. As the project goes on, it's actually ahead of construction. That's the good news. It will be completed before the end of this calendar year, probably uh, Thanksgiving to Christmas time period. Is the next increment and improvement should probably be in the summer. 
summer. But in the near term, at least between now and March 9th, unless something is changed to redirect morning traffic back to an alternate route to Lakeway or something with a signal, we're looking at, on a good day, an additional 15 minutes for our, for our commuters. On a poor day, 25 to 30 minutes, which is obviously unacceptable. May I address any questions? Yeah, actually, I realize uh, that we are being inconvenienced to facilitate a project that benefits Jefferson Parish. Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, and I also would put my, 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 my feet in the shoes of the council member in that area and understand that <coughs> she may or may not take some heat over making those changes. Uh, but, but the one thing that I need to ask you. Yes, sir. What happens if we have an accident in that pileup and we have a fire? Chairman Gould, you, you nailed it. That's the most... And this is a safety issue. It, the last three and a half miles of the bridge, there's no way to get to it. At the last crossover is three and a half miles from the South Shore. We are bumper to bumper traffic. It's moving, but it's creeping bumper to bumper every morning now for probably twice that distance out. The only way to get to it, and uh, many of you may have been in this situation, is at times it's a two-lane bridge without shoulders. You've got to split the traffic. Our PD and motorist assistance personnel are terrific. Nobody does it better, but here's the situation. If we get two trucks, with automobiles you can do it, but if you get two trucks side by side, we may not be able to. Our average response time to an accident is less than five minutes. If that situation happens, it could be catastrophic. And may I interject one other thing? Uh, you mentioned the Jefferson Parish Council, uh, Ms. Lee Chang. She's actually been more than empathetic and I think trying as best as she can to address this. Okay, well, I, I appreciate that. And I can appreciate the position she's in, but it seems to me that when you have a situation where uh, you could have a catastrophic uh, exactly. accident within their borders, by the way. This is Jefferson Parish yes, over is. there. Uh, I would think that they would be more responsive, even though I know, I know that they're, they're trying to work with us. Sometimes you have to make a tough choice because of safety. Thank you for saying that. In fact, Mrs. Brister, President Brister, has been very helpful also. I think what all of us have been trying to avoid is a them and us situation. And while the project will ultimately benefit the South Shore for storm protection, there are some benefits to our commuters in the long run. It could sure. enhance the discharge ability of the bridge, but in the near term, it's a, it's a potential tragedy waiting to happen. I think you, we had some people in the yes, audience that wanted you. to speak. Thank you, Colton. And then uh, we may ask you, yes. I know Ms. Brister has something to speak about. Yes, sir. State your name for the record, please. Sir. My name is Louis Robin, R-O-B-E-I-N. I live at 211 Esquinox in Lewisburg. Um, <clears throat> I'm one of the 20,000 or 3,000. Um, I'll commute now in the morning. And let, let me back up and state, um, I have two dogs in the hunt. I live over here. My practice is pretty much statewide, but my office is on Severn. Um, so <clears throat> I, I pay um, taxes here and I pay business taxes in Jefferson. So whatever I say here, if I get you to lean on Jefferson, I, you know, I'm not saying there's gonna be any retaliation. <laughs> but I mean, but I would also suffer from the alternate route, which I certainly support, that would impact our business on Severn. But uh, it, it, from a health and safety issue, I'm in that traffic in the morning and I was in that traffic this morning as David, my neighbor, was in that traffic this morning where uh, the Causeway Police Force more than adequately handled the, um, the, um, the fog and the caravan. Um, but, but it is an issue. And it, for, for us, that whether we work in Severn or, or in David's case, works downtown, when you add the Causeway construction, that's another half hour sometimes to get downtown. Well, I'm, I'm to Severn now on a good day within an hour. So I have to, <clears throat> my choice is to sort of like maybe practice law illegally by using a cell phone while I sit there in that eight mile backup, but it, it, it's getting worse and worse. And, and I, know, <clears throat> I know Jefferson has their own political considerations, but we, we have to do something about this because there's gonna be a collision. It's a dangerous situation. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience? Yes, ma'am. State your name for the record, please. Linda Foreman. I live in Mandeville and I don't usually cross the bridge for business or anything. However, one morning I did have to go over there and if it wasn't for a car, like maybe the last car to go over that last bridge or o overpass hump before the end of the bridge, we may have had a, a serious backup and a collision because you could not see 
all the traffic that was down there stopped, and that was my first experience with that long line. So I really do think inconvenience is one thing, but the safety issue, like you said, is something yeah. else, and we're gonna have a, a bad, bad collision, I think, if we don't get that fixed. Was that light always there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But you, the, you see, what, what you have to understand is that when you came off the bridge normally, you went into four lanes and you had, you had this massive stacking area where the traffic could spread out. Some of that traffic would go left, some of the traffic would go straight, and some of it would actually turn onto uh, West Esplanade and head down in that other direction. Yeah. It, had an, it had the ability to stack up and disperse. Now what's happened is everything's been channeled and locked in two lanes. Okay. And that's, what's, that's why it's causing the, ba the backup, and the backup's caused by the light itself. Because I never noticed the light until now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is David Lawton. I live on 220 Fountain Street. Uh, I go across every day, five days a week at or six, um, and it's a real problem. It's, uh, as, as Louis talked about, the, the backup, as you know, varies from two or three miles to five or six miles. That's one of the problems you don't, everybody knows it's coming, but you know exactly where it's going to be, and then you get people on cell phones who are sitting there trying to gauge and stop and go. So it's a dangerous situation because when you usually go across the causeway, everybody's going the same speed. There's no entrances, no exits. It's a very nice flow. And all of a sudden, you're in a very si different situation here in addition to the time. The time is, is uh, very, very disruptive on everybody. So you know, it is a safety issue, I think, in terms of uh, the causeway is not designed for that kind of backup and people suddenly to be there and, and then stop and go traffic down there as well as you know, it's a lot of time added on to the commute. Sure. You know, from a safety aspect, they probably ought to stay off the cell phones. Yeah. From a practical standpoint, I know human behavior is going to be different. It's not me. I'm looking at the guy next to me. <laughs> <laughs> President Brister. And all of these points are so well taken. And I wanted to just on, in my time commend Carlton Dufresneau and the Causeway Police. They have done an absolutely amazing job through all of this. I had the pleasure of sitting on the Causeway Commission when they started this construction and we knew the bad times were coming. We were able to get through some of the times we thought would be bad and I'm sorry I'm not there with you now Carlton but I know what you go through every day and thank you and please please tell the officers how much we appreciate what they do to try to keep us safe. Thank you. Okay closed. Uh, anyone on the council? Mr. Falconer? Uh, oh, excuse yeah, me, uh, Mr. Canulet. Yeah, I, ju I just have one question I, I think might be able to help you all. Is the Causeway Boulevard under the state road system? Maybe, maybe we need to appeal to the state, the L to no. DOTD, get some help with this. No. no. It's Jefferson Parish. It is in Jefferson? Yes, yeah. Yes, that's, Jefferson. that's another option. Mr. Falconer. Yeah, uh, I'd just like to remind everybody, I mean, certainly security is the number one issue that, um, that we're concerned with out there, but it just struck me as a tremendous waste of petrochemical to uh, <laughs> sit out there in an automobile that's just idling on the bridge, not to mention the uh, concurrent uh, pollution that's added to the atmosphere. So with all that having been said, I'd like to propose a resolution that we as the St. Tammany Parish Council request that the Jefferson Parish Council uh, keep the causeway and 6th Street traffic signal green continuously southbound from 7.30 in the morning until 8.30 in the morning, which will be the tra uh, peak traffic times, and to re redirect uh, South Shore morning traffic to, late, to the Lakeway concept, uh, complex by way of Severn Avenue. And we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Belisario. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Okay. Thank uh, you. All. Thank thank you. you. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they'll uh, give us some relief. Next item, uh, uh, before we move on to the next item, which would be the consent calendar, um, uh, Council Member uh, O'Brien has requested a point of personal privilege, and I yield the floor to her. 
Hey, I wanted to let the public know that Grand Family Dentistry is going to be having their first annual dentist, Dentistry at Heart Day, which is tomorrow. Registration starts at 7 a.m. It's located at 2083 3rd Street in Mandeville, which is the corner of Sharp Road and 3rd Street. Now, this is for people of need. They're gonna treat the first 100 patients or as many as possible until 5 p.m. However, you must be at least 18 years old. They said patients will be seen on a first come, first serve basis, and they can choose between a cleaning, filling, or extraction. And they do encourage you to bring chairs, blankets, whatever you need to, because you're probably gonna be sitting outside for a long time. So please spread the word to people who may not have dental insurance. The phone number to contact them if you're interested is 985-624-8602. And you can visit their website, www.mandevillefamilydentistry.com. And we'd like to thank them for this public service. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Brister, I believe you have some announcements to make. I do, and thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. You will notice we have a couple extra people at our round table today, and it is my pleasure to introduce two new interim staff, um, the heads of department for the administration. Uh, Ms. Trilby Lenfant, who will be um, the Intergovernmental Relations Department head. She um, comes to us from the city of Mandeville, as you all probably know, as a councilwoman there. We are looking forward to her working with um, our government agencies, including the council, working between um, all of those agencies. We will be bringing a resolution next month um, to ask you to confirm this interim as permanent for Trilby and Trilby. Thank you, and we're happy to have you here. And secondly is Mr. Johnny Bordelon. Uh, the same situation as interim until next month when we do bring forth a resolution for you to confirm. Um, Johnny is president of the Borderline, was president of the Borderline Engineering LLC, and prior to his starting his own engineering firm, Mr. Borderline served for 10 years as traffic operations en engineer for the Louisiana Department of Transportation. He also served on the Regional Planning Commission uh, where he served as traffic engineer for five years. So you can see uh, why we wanted them here and why we're so happy to have them here. And I would appreciate uh, their consideration next month when we bring that resolution forth. Thank you. Thanks. I welcome y'all. Look forward to working with you. All right, moving on to consent calendar. Any items not pulled from the consent calendar are automatically approved in whole by one, by one vote. Items pulled from the consent calendar are discussed and voted upon individually. Uh, I have a request to pull item number four for ordinances for introduction under resolutions number one, two, three, and five. Um, any uh, other items need to be pulled on the council from any council members? From the public? From the administration? Okay, so, hearing so, I'll t entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. Second by Mr. Canulet. Please vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, uh, first item that was pulled is ordinance calendar number 4710, ordinance to amend the Parish Unified Development Code, volume one, section 7.02, sign regulations relative to residential subdivision and center meeting, medium entrance signs to add community bill, uh, bulletin bull board signs. Uh, I believe this needs to be tabled, has not been heard by the Zoning Commission. M moved by Mr. Canyon at the table, second by Mr. Smith. Vote with your lights on the table, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, under resolutions, council series number, this is gonna be resolution number one. Uh, resolution council series number C, 3190, resolution to concur, not concur with the city of Slidell annexation and rezoning of 2.3299 acres. Mr. Ortiz, I believe this is in your district. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna move to concur with it. Motion to concur, second by uh, Mr. Canulet. Vote with your lights on the concurrence.
motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, second item, resolution council series number C, 3283, resolution to appoint uh, blank as the auditing firm for physical year 2011. Uh, Mr. Belisario, you are chair of the uh, finance committee and I believe you have a recommendation. Right, the finance committee uh, voted last Wednesday to appoint the Laporte firm for the uh, fiscal year 2011. So you, your motion is to appoint Laporte, Cert, and Hand? Is yes. That correct? Second by Mr. Smith. Any discussion? The other thing I would clarify so everybody knows, it, it is for one year, and the committee will be looking at potential changes to work with the administration for the uh, remaining three years of our term. Okay, so the motion's for a one-year contract extension. We have a motion. We had a second. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, uh, next item is Resolution Council Series number C3301, resolution to concur or not concur with the town of Abita Springs annexation and rezoning of 1.38 acres. This is Ward 4, District 5. I'm going to need to uh, ask someone to uh, move to table. The town of Abita so has moved. not taken action. Motion, second by Mr. S uh, Thompson. Vote with your lights on the table, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, council series number C3319, resolution approving the holding of an election in St. Tammany Parish Recreation District 6 on April 21st, 2012 to authorize the levy of a special tax therein. And I believe bond council's here to explain this to us. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Akers with Foley New Dell. It's a pleasure to see all of you this evening. Recreation District 6 is actually in Councilman Tanner's district, and they're requesting your permission to place an item on the uh, April 21st ballot to approve a six mil ad valorem tax. Uh, the tax is broadly stated, operations, maintenance, acquiring property, et cetera, but it's gonna be used primarily for operations of the recreation district. They currently have no operational millage in effect at this point. Uh, with your permission, the item will go on the April 21st ballot. If successful, it would be uh, levied beginning with tax year 2012 through tax year 2021. Mr. Tanner? I move adoption of the resolution. Second by Mr. Falconer. Any discussion? Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, moving on to appeals. Um, before, before we uh, go to the first case, do we have any that have been either resolved or will be tabled? You know will be tabled. Okay, I have one that I believe has been resolved. I, I would ask the council to move item number four, appeal number four up. Motion, second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights to move it up. Okay, we're going to Motion get is unanimous, one absent. <clears throat> Application by F.A. Uh, Rothschild appealing the uh, Zoning Commission denial on January 3rd, 2012, to rezone 2.532 acres located west of Highway 59, north of Casreal Drive, south of Parker Drive from A1 Suburban District to HC1 Highway Commercial, uh, it's Ward 3, District 5. Yes, sir, Mr. Griffin. Mr. Gould, uh, I'm representing Mr. Rothschild at this meeting. Uh, I had some discussion with you and Mr. Fontenot, and I think the matter has been resolved to everybody's satisfaction. Uh, some of the residents are here who will live close in proximity to the property, and uh, with your request, I'd like to have the property zoned to a uh, neighborhood light commercial with a 30-foot uh, buffer zone around the perimeter of the property. Okay, for, for clarification, what uh, my understanding is that on the south side and the west side, uh, there will be a 30-foot strip that will remain A1. Yes, sir. Okay, the, the rest of it will be rezoned to NC6. Right. So you need to ask that we uh, amend your petition. Request, yes, sir. Okay. and. and uh, now I'll, I'll hear from the opposition, or in this case, people have helped work you work, help Mr. you work Gould, through this. I don't think the existing residential is A1. You just said A1. I'm, I'm well, that's what the that's what the uh, paper says here, A1. Or maybe the adjacent properties were or not A1. Okay. Okay. I'm going by what's what, yeah. what you guys put in, <laughs> that's, Mr. That's Clark. I think you have something to say. 
Chairman, members, uh, my name is Charles Clark, 2, uh, 214 58 Casrail, and we would concur with the, uh, with the change, making it a uh, NC6. Our biggest uh, problem, as uh, you well know, Mr. Dean, this, this is the line of demarcation that we've always asked for in that neighborhood, and this will stop the uh, domino effect, saying that the next piece of property would also abut a, a commercial property by maintaining that 30-foot residential bumper zone Literally, it should stop the, uh, the intrusion into commercial property in that subdivision. So we would concur with this. I'll give you a little bit nicer buffer, too, from whatever buildings are, are constructed in there. So I, think it's, a, I think it's a good compromise, and I want to thank you all for working this, this project out. It's kind of been a nightmare for all of us. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I need someone to move to, well, the motion, Mr. Stefanski. You need to override the now. And, and change the zoning to NC6. That's correct. So we have a motion. I need a second by Mr. Canulet. Vote with your lights on the override. With the provisions. By with the those way. provisions. <clears throat> motion is unanimous, one absent. Need someone to move on the ordinance. So moved. And second by Mr. Canulet. We, no, no other action is required. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, let, going back to the uh, top of the appeals, item number one, Charles Walker appealing the Zoning Commission approval on November 1, 2011 to rezone 1.5 acres located on the northeast corner of Commercial Drive and Browns Village Road from Industrial 1 <coughs> to Industrial 3. This is in Ward 8, District 14, Mr. Smith's district. Mr. Marone. Uh, Chairman Gould, members of the council, Paul Marone on behalf of Mr. Walker. Uh, and our opposition to uh, the request is, is really a simple one, and that is that uh, we do not believe that the I-3 zoning as currently proposed is compatible with any of the properties around it. Um, before I go into exactly what the I-3 zone is, I'd like to step back a moment and, and give a little bit of history on this piece of property. Uh, the property, first of all, has been zoned, or excuse me, has been owned for many years by, uh, by the petitioner in this case, but at no time during that ownership did they move to, uh, to build anything on the site. So we're dealing with a raw piece of land, despite the fact that it's been owned for quite some time. In our last hearing, uh, back in December, uh, it was suggested that prior to the comprehensive rezoning, this parcel had been zoned for this use, that it was zoned heavy industrial at that time, but as a result of the comprehensive rezoning, there was an error or there was some confusion, which reduced the zoning down to a light industrial zone. And that is not, not accurate, uh, and let me explain why. It is true that the owners had some rights at some point in the past that could have allowed them to construct their intended use on the property, but it was not by virtue of zoning. It was by virtue of a conditional use permit, which is quite different than uh, an overall change of zoning. And the reason it's diff different is because, as you all who have been on the council for some time know, the old conditional use permit process was a very specific process. It didn't change the underlying zoning. It allowed certain specific rights pursuant to a site plan. Those conditional use permits also only stayed in effect for a year. If after that year you didn't pull a building permit, then you lost the right to the conditional use permit. You still had your underlying zoning, but you no longer could realize that specific use. So in 2008, there was a conditional use permit that would have allowed the construction uh, of a facility that is, that is being discussed right now. However, no building permit was pulled. In 2009, that right lapsed, and it went back to the underlying zoning. What you're being asked to do now is something quite different. If you change the zoning from I-1 to I-3, and this facility doesn't get built, and this property gets sold, then we don't know what would go there. We do know what the permitted uses are in I-3, and then any of those would be, would be permitted. A buyer would have all of the rights that are set forth in your I-3 ordinance. So the bottom line is uh, we are not simply correcting the zoning that existed prior. 
because the zoning that existed prior did not allow this use. The use was only allowed by virtue of the uh, conditional use permit, which expired in 2009. Uh, if you look at a zoning map surrounding this site uh, on three sides is light industrial. Across the street, we go to residential. There's some apartments, there's a church, and there's a residential neighborhood. I would submit to you that that is not the place that was intended for I-3. If it had been the place intended for I-3 in the comprehensive zoning, I would submit to you that it most likely would have been zoned I-3, but it wasn't. It was zoned I-1, light industrial, because that is what surrounds it on that side of the street. Um, if you look at the purpose of the I-3 industrial district, and I'll just read a portion of it, it says the district is to provide for the location of industrial uses of large scale, highly intense industrial uses along major collectors and arterials in such a fashion and location to minimize the conflict with nearby residential uses. That's not the case here. What's being proposed here is directly in contravention uh, of that language. And as I said, if, in fact, the I-3 uh, is approved, then we very well can see uh, any of these uses, like natural gas gathering plants, non-atomic electrical generating plants, paper products manufacturing, petroleum and petroleum-based products, refining, processing, manufacturing, rubber products manufacturing, steel mills. Now, I'm not suggesting they're going to put a steel mill on a 1.5-acre track, but my point is, this site is not suited for I-3. And if we zone it I-3, then this owner or subsequent owners will be vested with whatever rights are permitted. And I think that would be a mistake. Uh, it, would, uh, it would affect my client negatively. It would affect the clients, uh, excuse me, the, the residents who live in the surrounding areas. And uh, I don't believe that it's appropriate. So we would respectfully request your consideration uh, in overturning the Planning and Zoning Commission's approval of the request. Mr. Zafonsek, how much time does he have left? He has about 30 seconds left on this. I didn't state for the record uh, that you have five minutes and then two minutes of rebuttal, but uh, Mr. Marone, I'm well aware that you know the rules. Uh, okay, do we have someone in support of the uh, zoning approval? Good evening. My name is Lisa Gintz. I am corporate counsel for Gas and Supply. We purchased that property back in 2008, and we found a leased piece of property over on Highway 11, and it fit our needs. The landlord informed us that selling the property will now fit his needs. So we applied again for I-3 zoning in the property that we purchased prior to the 2008 ordinance that was passed. The ordinance that was passed <clears throat> in July of 08 states that the official zoning map of the parish of St. Tammany shall be and is hereby amended to incorporate the zoning reclassification specification of section one, which is changing it from, changing zoning from M1 to M3. Gas and supply, and you have uh, some crudely crafted uh, black and white information in front of you, and I apologize for it not being in color, but it, gas and supply has 42 locations. The majority of our locations in North Texas make up the largest propane distributorship in North Texas. We are a gas business. We sell gases. We pump gases. Flammables and petroleum gases make up less than 5% of our entire inventory. The Slidell location will not have a gas plant. It will simply have propane tanks like you see at a lot of area gas stations, like you see at the bait shop, like you see at the wrecker service on Main Street, a 1,000-gallon propane tank. We are gas people. We adhere to the Louisiana Propane Commission. We adhere to the fire marshal. We have extensive training. And propane, when used in the context of our safety training and our understanding of the gases, is a, is a safe gas. 
Right now our location in Slidell employs 10 local people full time. We generate about $90,000 a year in, in uh, St. Tammany Parish taxes. And we want to expand our operations. We want to move to a facility that is near our customers that will allow us to sell more and employ more people. As you can see, there is, there is a, on the third page of your handout, there is a, uh, a picture of our Pasadena, Texas facility. This facility is the same, has the same aesthetics as our Slidell location as we plan to build there in Slidell. The, the following handout is one of the neighborhood, Browns Village Industrial Park. And Browns Village and that in the road and the surrounding neighborhoods and Mr. Smith, they, they have a wonderful neighborhood and wonderful people and we met with them and we're very appreciative of their time. It, as you can see, this industrial park is used as a heavy, uses in some ways heavy industrial, in some ways I-3, mid, light industrial, I-2. The, the, if you were to look at the uh, commercial drive, which is where we want to be located at, across from us, there are two industrial movers, then Magnum Construction, B&W Trucking, Lafarge, and a concrete plant. There's also a plumbing warehouse, and then there's the Sheriff's substation. I believe it's a, it might be a halfway house, I'm not certain. But at that sheriff station, there's about a 10 to 12,000 gallon gasoline tank that sits above ground. At, at the construction company, there is a propane tank about the same size as what we're proposing to put in. Also at that site, there are sandblasting and painting operations. And some of the movers have those large containers for industrial moving that are um, piled uh, near the rear of the building. The proposed facility, which is adjacent to our, to our land, is an outdoor recreational facility. It's our contention that that facility wouldn't be rated in any I zoning, but rather would be CB1 or NC6. As I mentioned earlier, it is not highly uncommon to have mixed use development sites. The very last page of your handout shows a location uh, that I drove past a couple of weeks ago. It's on Front Street and you might be familiar with it if you fish at the bait shop or if you drive like me at your East time, Rutter. Your time has expired. Thank You're you. now into your rebuttal. Mr. Marone. Thank you. Just a few follow-up points. Um, based on the records that I've looked at, uh, the Cairns family have owned this property since 1996. So it, it has been under the control of their family either through a trust or through an LLC since that time. So they have, they have had this property for quite some time. and. Uh, I question whether or not there is an intent to build on the property. Um, I would also point out that if this use is not much different than we see at the bait shop or Walmart, then it shouldn't need an I-3. And that goes to my point earlier. If they don't build, even if what they are going to build is fantastic, if they don't build, then by giving a rezoning to the entire property, then it, it is fair game for anything that is permitted in I-3. And there are many things in I-3 that should not be in this location. Uh, if you look at a zoning map, the one thing that you will not see anywhere around this is I-3. Now, I've taken this podium asking for I-2 in much more remote areas and was told that I'd lost my mind, that I needed to find something even more remote. And now we're talking about I-3, which is one of the most intense zones that we have. And uh, certainly I respect their right um, to utilize the property and to realize their investment. But I-1 is zoned in the comprehensive rezoning, I really believe, is the more appropriate zone. Um, I-3, 
uh, takes it to a level and introduces uses into this area that is simply incompatible in my estimation. And I would, uh, I would urge you uh, to vote accordingly. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Gitz. If there was a variance available, we could take it, but there isn't. For us to have a gas and supply company without gas is, is fruitless for us. The concrete plant would be zoned I-4. The, the other areas with the propane tank would be zoned I-3. The area across from us would be zoned I-2. I submit to this council that our request that we be allowed to have a propane tank there uh, comports to the overall design and overall function of Browns Village Industrial Park. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'll close the floor. Uh, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think there are some other parties who are here and may want to express also to, to us their uh, concerns about this particular appeal. And I want to say before she comes up, though, that, you know, when I, when I left this, this body, eight years ago, this was one of the most um, intense issues that I had to deal with on my way out. And I never thought in my wildest dreams it would be the first one on my way back in. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back is right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this, 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 the, the original process uh, used in the establishment of this industrial park was flawed from the beginning, which, was a testament, which is a testament to you know, when you start something off wrong, it, most of the time it's going to end up wrong. But I, I do want to hear from some of the uh, other folks in the audience about this particular appeal before I make my comments, and also from some of the council. Yeah, and I failed, I failed to uh, um, call for uh, anyone else, but uh, this is under your nickel. Come on up, ma'am. My name is Savilla Dawson, and I own the property right directly in front of uh, the lot that they want to put the gas supply. Uh, their front door and my front door would be looking at it. When I come out my driveway, I'll be looking directly at this gas plant every day. I met with them Monday night, and uh, I told them directly that I didn't want it. I was against it. And uh, I have 14 grandchildren, and I have three great-grandchildren, and they're out in the yard and everything. I have to go to sleep there every night. I just don't want that in front of me at all. And I'm representing um, our Neighborhood Watch organization. It's not just me. It's a lot of other homeowners in that area that are here tonight, some of them with me, and all of them feel the same way as I do. And they don't even live directly in front of it, but I just don't want it there. Thank you for listening to me. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Okay, Mr. Smith. Yes, and I, and I would defer to any of my other colleagues if they have any questions at this time. If not, uh... I, I do have one. Uh, I notice y'all have the uh, propane bullets by the bait shop and Eddie's labeled. The bullet y'all are talking about putting in front by your place or in your place, is it bigger, same size? What? It, what how big? It's actually, if you look... It's not the same size or smaller. It's only it's a thousand gallons. Okay. All right, thank you. One of the things missing in the packet here that was presented by the uh, applicant for the uh, zoning is the A4 residential zoning directly across the street. And the size of that community is about uh, twice the size of the entire industrial park. And without that piece, you, you don't really have an appreciation unless you, you actually go out and visit the site to really understand the, the relationship of the proposed uh, 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 zoning change to the neighborhood that's right across the street. And so when I first got this, I looked at it and I said, well, everybody's at the table except the right people, and that's the people who um, are most affected by it. We had 
and these two sides on each side, and but the people who are really going to be impacted by the ones who live there, the ones who work there, the, the children who also uh, recreate in that area as well. So uh, as I looked at this and spoke with all parties involved, I am an ardent, I am an ardent uh, supporter of uh, economic development, especially in St. Tammany Parish as we move forward with the new uh, leadership that we have here. But this particular zoning and the intensity of it as it relates to no buffering separating it from the residential, none whatsoever. There's just one highway there, uh, well, street rather, that separates it from the, uh, the proposed zoning. And the absence of any kind of design that we can put our teeth in other than this picture of another location, uh, it, it gives pause for, for me having any um, credibility in the fact that it is definitely going to be built. And so with that in mind, if we gave this I-3 zone and this intense zone, if we granted it, then we would be strapped with the possibility of something else coming that was certain to be much more undesirable. So with that in mind, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we overturn the uh, Zoning Commission uh, decision to uh, approve this, this, this zoning change. I have a motion, second by Mr. Belisario. I have one question. Sydney. what's the limit of the number of those tanks that they talked about that they could put on this property? Or is there a limit? There's no specified limit. Oh, okay. Real easy one. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any other comment? Vote with your lights, please. And that's to override? Is it correct? Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, need to move on a resolution, Mr. Smith? Second by Mr. Belisario. Vote with your lights on a resolution, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay, second appeal is Lovell Blitch on behalf of Marini Trace Subdivision appealing the Zoning Commission approval on December 6, 2011 to rezone 17,551 square feet located east of Labar Street, north of Foy Street from A4 to A4A. Um, and this was approved, so... Ms. Blitch, is anyone here to represent the appellate? This is in Ward 4, District 7. Mr. Groby, do you know, do you have any knowledge? Yes. I um, spoke to both the <coughs> Ms. Blitch and the property owner who wants to ask for the zoning change. I've talked to the neighbors throughout the neighborhood. Her property is quite well kept and beautiful. I'd have no problem with concurring with the approval. Okay, is there any, uh, up, no one to support the opposition to the approval? So the, the motion is to the affirmative. I have a motion, and second by Mr. Canyolette. Vote with your lights on this, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. You want to introduce an ordinance? Motion to introduce, second by Mr. Tanner, and that's all we need on that item. Next appeal, applicant Sean Bro, Sr., appealing the Zoning Commission denial on January 3, 2012, to rezone 1.6 acres located south of Highway 435, west of Parr Street, east of Hillcrest Boulevard, from A3 to HC2, and this is in Ward 6 and 10, District 6. Uh, Mr. Bro. Good evening, council members. My name, your, is, your my name address. is Sean Bro, uh, 1548 Regatta Cove in Slidell. I'm here tonight to appeal the Zoning Commission denial of my request for a rezoning of a piece of property that I own. The property was purchased in 2007. At that time, it was zoned C2 for commercial use. My intent was to develop the parcel into a small commercial development in the future. With the parish rezoning, the zoning was changed to A3. I am requesting a change in zoning to HC2. 
Several issues were raised during the zoning commission meeting. It was suggested that we meet with Paul Carroll from engineering to discuss the issue of flooding and fill. We did meet with him last week and understand what will be required. I own the lot directly next to the lot that I am trying to rezone. The lot is of the same size, 1.6 acres. Consequently, I have the ability to excavate on that lot to offset any fill on the site for the proposed development, thereby meeting the revised parish ordinances. Additionally, a suggestion to use pervious concrete for parking areas was brought up. The use of pervious concrete in the project is a very feasible concept that my partners and I would consider to incorporate in the paved areas that would be part of the drainage mitigation plan. Additionally, landscaping that bodes well in wet areas would be incorporated into the design. Thank you. All right, is there any opposition to uh, the reversal of this? Yes, sir, come, come to the front. Come on up to the front. You've got uh, five minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Rivers. I represent the Nature Conservancy. And first of all, I want to thank all of y'all for uh, serving and uh, helping our parish grow in leaps and bounds. <laughs> But uh, what I would like to say is uh, we own the property right across the street from this site, and uh, it's been a, a preserve since 1998. And uh, we feel that the current zoning is very appropriate for the location and setting. And um, the pr proposed zoning is inappropriate for the following reasons. The area in question drains parallel with 435 into a small trib that crosses into our preserve. Subsequently could uh, leak gas, oil, grease, and other uh, possible pollutants uh, that would enter our preserve. And it would also enter the um, subdivision itself because water uh, leaves. Uh, I, I do have a handout here that might help understand if I could get this to pass out. small map just yes they're all stapled together so they'll come out in bunches go ahead while they're passing that out it uh, uh, the Abita Creek which this uh, tributary drains into is uh, a state scenic stream and it also uh, contains a rare uh, quill wart which is an in, on the endangered species list. If you'll look at the top map, the red line is coming out of the hill crest. It drains into uh, the, uh, the other red line that goes into the black line, which the black line is the Abita Creek. And a lot of times, whenever the uh, uh, whenever you have a significant rain, you'll have uh, the bridge that uh, crosses 435 there, or crosses the Abita Creek. When it gets to capacity, it'll actually backfill into the um, Hillcrest community and to our property as storage. But then, and that's where the problem could come up right there with. Uh, if you had any uh, pollutants, it could drain into the subdivision, could cause uh, health concerns there. Uh, the second one is, uh, which is the uh, black dotted line, there's, there's a lot more volume of water coming down the Abita Basin, which is about 9,000 acres, than the Big Reed, that's the red. And uh, what happens is they compete for that opening going under the bridge, which causes flooding there. And uh, if you look at the other bigger pictures, it's it's uh, uh, one of the one of the pictures there is uh, actually six to eight inches of water on 435 there. Now I don't know how you would uh, mitigate that with uh, development right there. 
the Nature Conservancy also uh, donated, uh, not really donated, but they went through the process of letting all the right of way for the new uh, bridge realignments there. We took it completely uh, on our side of the property. So the Conservancy understands and, and, and wishes to, uh, for, the, for some of the area, for the local convenience of the gas store. However, in just a short distance to the east or to the west would be a much better site for this, this type business. And uh, it would be more appropriate uh, at, a, at a different location and not in a, a flood zone A. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. How much time do we have? Two minutes. Would it be possible for us to have a few more minutes? I think there was well, some we'll time wait, used we'll up. Well, we'll wait to see. Let's go, go okay, through thank this. You. Um, my name is Nina Mackey. I live at 580 North Woods, which is just up the road from the property in question. And I am um, totally opposed to the zoning change for the property. Um, changing the zoning to highway commercial is an example of spot zoning that's entirely inconsistent with the St. Tammany Parish Comprehensive Zoning Plan. Both the Vision 2025 plan and the Comprehensive Zoning Plan were completed with a significant amount of time, effort, and funds by our parish leaders, including many of you, um, and with significant input from the public. These plans demonstrated a far-sighted and intelligent approach to, in search in, to ensuring a good future for our parish. Um, now, Mr. Bro is requesting a change that's out of keeping with all of these efforts. And here are the reasons that I think this is a bad zoning change. Number one, the property in question is situated on a long stretch of highway that is residential. From Abita Springs all the way to Talashik, there are residential properties on the highway and entrances to residential areas. The proposed commercial designation is totally out of character for the area and will open the way for additional zoning. This could be a tipping point that could ruin our whole community there. The property in question is a very low wetland, as you just heard, and is well known for flooding. Very, with very little rain, the entire property fills up with water and it flows across the roadway into the Abita Springs Preserve. You're now um, into your rebuttal time. Okay, the, um, the porous surfacing that they're talking about is notorious for clogging up. It's really not an efficient solution to um, solving the flooding problem. And the property is immediately across the street from the Nature Conservancy Flatwood Preserve. Um, I can't imagine visitors, I've met visitors from other states. Yesterday I met someone from Australia in the um, walkway there at the Nature Preserve. I can't imagine visitors driving down that road, coming to the Flatwood Preserve and seeing a huge gas station sitting up in the air. Um, it just seems ludicrous to me. Um, the professional planning and zoning staff and the zoning commission have um, studied the issue and denied it. Um, Mr. Bro does not live in the Highway 435 community. He did not participate in the comprehensive zoning plan revisions, yet he's garnered the support of District 6 councilmen that we voted into office. Mr. Tanner, please consider the needs and wishes of your constituents who were happy to give you an opportunity to serve us on the council. And I implore the rest of you to vote for the residents of that area. Our parish officials have made huge strides to preserve the future of the parish. This brand new council has an opportunity to continue this vision, to continue supporting the residents or the ability to fall into political favoritism and cronyism. So I really beseech you to think of the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Bro, how much time does he have left? <laughs> are you going to allow more time for either side, or what are you going to do? How much time is left on the rebuttal? He had about two and a half minutes plus the two minutes. Okay, rebuttal. well, <clears throat> we'll let, let these people exhaust the rebuttal time. 
and then we'll have Mr. Bro back. Okay, excuse me, Mr. Bro. We'll let, the, let these gentlemen speak. My name is Melvin A. Roberts, Jr. I live at 31050 Otide Road, Lacombe. And uh, I was invited uh, to speak by Mr. Bro because I'm a prospective uh, partner in this project. Uh, at the zoning... Wait, excuse me. You, yes. you're, you're for or against... The project. I, I'm for the project. You're for the project. He's, he's so, the wrong so we're in Mr. Bro's right rebuttal time. Yeah. Unless we have one gentleman that wants to come back uh, sure. in opposition, we'll yes. let you finish up that time, and then we'll move move to the other people. Uh, hello, my name is Richard Bradley. I live at 73526 Hillcrest Boulevard, right behind this property. If you look at the map that you have here, Hillcrest Boulevard. There's this double street here. My house would be in the blue there, being that I've had water in it three times. We've owned that piece of property since 1978. And uh, I want to thank Mr. Tanner for taking my call yesterday and us discussing it. Um, we talked about it, didn't agree. Um, and you asked me a question, you know, I asked why would they want to build something in a flood zone? You asked me, why did we build there? That, my property has been a homestead there since 1965, before all the impacts on the little Abita Creek. And we've owned it since 1978. I was kind of befuddled by your question, but that, that's why I live there. It's my parents' property. I bought it from my mother. But uh, the property floods. You have 6 to 12 inches of water coming across the highway into the subdivision. Anybody that's ever been out there, knows that a retention pond on the lot next door will make no difference when that carries water in a flood anyways mm -hmm. it's just common sense and uh my reason for being here is purely selfish you know i will admit that my property sits three or four lots behind this and i, I want to thank y'all for your time mr tanner thank you for your time thank you Appreciate sir it. mr bro or uh the other gentleman that how much time did they have, Steve? This, this won't take very long. Um, they, they've got about four and a half minutes total. Yes, sir. Well, basically, uh, my name is Melvin Roberts, Jr. I gave you my address, 31050 Tide Road, Lacombe. We have it. Uh, I was at the Planning and Zoning Commission when it was denied initially, and I, and I take the opposition's issues very seriously. Two things were brought up. It was about gasoline and oil running off of the slabs by the gas pumps into the ditches. So it stru struck a certain core with me. So I contacted the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality, which then sent me to the Department of Environmental Quality All Spill Division. I looked at St. Tammany Parish for the year of 2011. There were 26 all spills reported during that time. Not one was from a gas pumping station. Secondly, uh, th there's been the issue of, uh, of flooding in the neighborhood. Hillcrest subdivision encompasses approximately 500 acres. If there was one foot of water throughout that entire subdivision laying there, and we walked in and we filled our one acre lot, it would increase the water table 25 thousandths of an inch, one fortieth of an inch. So we're not going to create any additional flooding other than basically 25 thousandths of an inch on the water table. And so those are the only things I took issue with on the original planning and zoning denial. Uh, one of the things that I'm concerned about is that these gentlemen purchased this lot when it was highway commercial and spent $240,000 for it. And now, because it's been rezoned, it now has a value of $40,000. So there's, there's some issues that I think are going to move forward from this in as much as that uh, they never would have purchased it had it been zoned residential. You know, I've driven up and down that highway, and uh, it, there's a need for certain conveniences in that area. And I can tell you, these two guys I've seen what they've done in the past, I mean, they're talking about spending a million and a half dollars there. And so you think about the, you know, we, I, and the only way I would participate with them is if they did it on a very high-end type of proposition, and I'm talking about rustic look and different things like that. So anyway, so... He asked me to bring up these two points. So thank you all for your time. Thank, thank you, sir. Mr. Bro, you have how much time left, Steve? Uh, about two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes, sir. Two, two minutes and something. 
Yeah, cer certainly my, my feel on it is, you know, we've done our homework. We've talked with a lot of folks in the area. And, and quite frankly, in, in 07, I bought the property when it was commercial. I mean, I, I, to me, that was the big selling point. Uh, one of my other partners is a member at Money Hill Golf Course, and there was plenty of folks that live in Money Hill that would say, we'd love to have something in that area, and it encouraged it. And so we had an opportunity to buy the only piece of commercial land in that area. And so, you know, I went back and saved my money and, and got my partners together, and now we go to go ahead and develop this piece of commercial land and then find out that it was rezoned residential. I never was notified or anything. So I, I just hope that everyone takes into consideration that we're here to help the community. I'm here to provide some services and some needs to the folks that live out there. I don't want to be against anyone in that area. I know there's going to be some folks that are going to be against it. And that's in anything you do, there's going to be some folks that are going to be against it. But we hope that there's a majority of folks and we, we've done our homework to know that there are. There's a big traffic count, a big car count, and a lot of folks back there that I'm sure would love to not have to travel four miles each way to find the you know, cl closest convenience store or gas or, or milk or water. So, um, you know, I, I just hope that everyone takes into consideration that, you know, I did buy the lot as a commercial lot. I did, you know, spend $200,000 on that lot, and now it's worth 30000 so, um, you know, I'm hoping to be a part of the community. I, I really would, you know, my goal is to get with all these folks that are against it and, and try and, and show them what we're looking to do here and that we're looking to develop and economically develop that area. So I'm hoping that, you know, that the, the council takes that into consideration. Thank you. Um, your time has expired, ma'am. Thank you. I'm gonna close the floor and open the floor up to comments. I see a number of lights on. Uh, Mr. Stefanczyk, do you want to speak? No? Mr. Belisario, I believe. I had mine on only because okay. of the clock. Okay. I just have Thank a couple you. questions. I was out of the room. What is his proposal for the development of land? Uh, we were going to build a uh, convenience uh, commercial, I, I hate to say strip mall, but it's, it's going to be a commercial development anchored by a convenience fuel okay. station. All right, thanks. City, for you, uh, looking at, you know, the staff's, you know, uh, report, you know, this this was uh, rezoned to A3 doing a comprehensive zone. When you look at the pieces of property, three of the areas, the southeast and west, are zoned A3. What was the zoning under 523 before we did the comprehensive zone for this area? The zoning was residential. I believe it might have been an A4 uh, uh, because of Hillcrest. I don't think it was rural. I believe old Hillcrest was A4, A3 or A4. Uh, they came in for a rezoning of this parcel. Uh, staff recommended denial at that time. We went through the comprehensive rezoning and then through 2025. Uh, the residents in that general area made it clear, in, as they did a lot of the northern part of the parish, that they wanted their developments uh, to to go f be located at Talashik, at Abita Springs, at the those crossroads that had to started to develop and start actually develop those those as crossroads and not just strip out with commercial. So, uh, so that that in combination with the the challenges of developing the property uh, because of the low nature of the property, we recommended that the original rezoning under 523 denial. The uh, the council did approve the rezoning. And mm -hmm. then we went through the comprehensive rezoning. We again recommended that it remain residential. Okay. That's what I needed to know. Mr. Canyon. Yeah. Sydney again. Uh, I'm not super familiar with the area, so uh, it, it appears to be fairly low. Is that a correct assumption over there? Uh, yes. It's, a, it's basically that in a lot of Hillcrest and what you see on the maps, Green, Trap, Francis Drive, the more uh, rectangular blocks or all down in the Abita floodplain. Okay. Uh, the second question is, if if a, like he said, strip mall slash gas station was to be put there with our, our, our flood mitigation and, and all our laws and variances, what kind, how many uh, parking spots, just kind of off the top of your head, parking spots, how many possible pumps 
Are, are we looking uh, at? We have a limit on the pumps. I don't remember the number. Mr. Dean would probably remember that because he fought for it for <laughs> about a year. Uh, so eight, eight pumps, that's two to a side, so 16 uh, stations, that you know, 16 uh, places that you could park a car and pump. Uh, and as from the discussion about uh, the testimony about discussion with uh, Mr. Carroll, it sounds like they would apply, to, engineering would apply the no net fill, which means you would excavate and create retention mm -hmm. somewhere on the property and use that, that soil to fill to actually raise the building site. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Dean. Okay, yeah, let's back up just a second. Tell me again, he was saying that it was C2 before it was before the comprehensive rezoning. It was, I believe, A3 or A4 in 19, I don't remember the year, it's in the staff report. It was changed to C2 by the council. In the comprehensive rezoning, it reverted back to a residential. And the, do you remember what the commission's um, stance on it was when it was going from A3 to C2? I don't remember the commission. I remember the staff's recommendation, and I know the council did approve it. I don't recall the staff's recommendation was against was denial. It's going to C2. It was to leave it as a residential, whatever the existing residential okay. zoning was. All right. Let me uh, let me make, clarify something. There's no way for these people to meet a no net increase of fill by digging a hole in a deep hole already. So they'll end up building on, on, on construction piers. Um, just to be, be clear on that, it's impossible. If you're underwater, you can't make a deeper hole that's going to compensate for the fill that you're going to displace the I water I was just, with. right from Mr. Carroll, from what right. he said, Mr. Carroll so said, the, that's what it's like. The buildings will have to be pier construction. The parking lots will be inundated. Uh, I do have one question for Ms. Smythe, uh, possibly. Um, with the amount of inundation that would run through these parking lots, um, given the typical pollution drippings off of a car or something like that that would, would be on the ground if this was an aggregate parking lot, uh, at what point is it so diluted that it becomes nearly harmless? Well, I can't harmless. tell you what the dilution um, concentration might be, but um, every commercial facility, every facility that's constructed is supposed to have impoundments all kind of um, either structural or non-structural best management practices. Okay. So it should not leave their site. Okay. So that they have an engineering feet on their hands. Exactly. Okay. Marty? I, you know, let me, let me finish. Sure. I, you know, I, I have to take into consideration that they bought this property as, as, see, as commercial, so I have to have some empathy there. I see some very large engineering uh, uh, challenges going forward. Uh, Mr. Belisario, and then we'll go, to, we'll go to, to the councilman, Mr. Tanner. I think when you're talking about the engineering feats, I think what the owner wants to be able to do is use his adjacent lot, and then and they, you have to go through planning to re-subdivide them into one. Because well, you can't I, do the improvements you're talking about on the current lot. It, it's not feasible. Well, if they're both in the floodplain, they're going to build on piers. That's what's mm -hmm. going to happen. Yeah. Mr. Tanner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, we're doing a lot of discussion about um, flooding and water and where we got to build and what have you. And we talk about a zoning pro uh, case, not a planning case. Uh, they know that they're going to have to meet the requirements of the Department of Engineering and Planning and what have you to get a permit to build this project. And we all know that what those requirements are. Uh, but it's not us, it's not our responsibility to tell the owners of that land, you know, what they can do and can't do as far as I'm concerned when it comes to the fact that they bought this property as commercial and now they want to use it as commercial. It's easy to sit here and say, it, you are allowed eight pumps. You know, you, we're talking about a businessman that lives in his parish and has three other businesses that are very, very well done. And this particular business is going to be 
done on the uh, basics of the post office in Abita so that it matches the area that they're going to. Now, I've talked to a lot of the people in Hillcrest, and they're excited about being able to go to the end of the street and get a loaf of bread or to get some, some gas to put in their automobile or even do mow grass. I live in a situation where I have to go five miles one way and seven miles another way to get gas or to get water or to get a Coke or to get milk. And it's very inconvenient. Now, I've talk, the people in uh, Money Hill have not been opposed to this project. And for us to say that, the oil and what have you that comes off of this service station or this uh, convenience store is going to have an adverse effect on the Nature Conservatory is ludicrous because we've got cars running up and down that road all the time and water goes over that road all the time. Now, they might not believe that I know this, but I have been there when it was flooded. I had to have the National Guard take kids home in that subdivision. So I know that it floods. But they also know that the building of this one, and then you talk, he said strip mall, but I, I think he's talking about a you know, 4,000 square foot or 3,000 square foot building. He's not talking about a 20,000 square foot building. Uh, like I said, I, I don't have any problem with the zoning at C2. I do want him to, to make sure that he follows the regulations that the parish has, and that's all we can ask him to do. Mm -hmm. so I move that we override the zoning denial. Second by Mr. Thompson. Excuse me, floor is closed, please. I have a motion and we have a second. Any other further discussion amongst the council members? All right, seeing none, vote with your lights, please. And this is to override, so I believe it's two thirds. Huh? Mr. Bryan, Mr. Stefanovic. Motion passes, 10 yeas, one nay, two absent. All right, we need to move on a uh, ordinance for introduction. So moved. Second by Mr. Thompson, it's, that ends the appeals. Okay, under ordinances for adoption, <clears throat> ordinance calendar number 4637AA, ordinance to amend the parish unified development code regarding cemeteries and mausoleums. Uh, this needs to be tabled, uh, has not been heard by the Zoning Commission. Motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Sharp. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4688AA, ordinance to amend the St. Tammany Parish Unified Development Code, Volume 1, Section 8.02, Land Clearing Permit. Uh, Mr. Stefanczyk, I believe you have something to handle with this? Yes, um, we do have a, uh, everybody has a, a change in front of them. It's a piece of paper, it's got all the red on it. And um, basically what they have done is, is kept the thing at $10,000. They've rediscussed the amount, the way it's going to be based on the value of the road rather than the $15 a linear foot, which wouldn't uh, take care of most of the roads in the parish. So <clears throat> this is an adequate, uh, this, is, this is a good uh, determination for it, a good, a good amendment to put in there. And <clears throat> I would like to see that this goes forward. It is not a substantive change to the uh, It's clarification. The okay. So you are gonna move to amend? I move to amend. Uh, with Second by Ms. O'Brien. Vote with your lights on the, on the amendment, please. Mr. Tanner, you, oh, thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Just to verify, uh, both planning department and public works department are comfortable with this proposed change? It's their language. Yes. Great, thank yeah, you. It was their language <laughs> over back there. <laughs> motion is unanimous, two out. All right, we can move on the so uh, moved. motion as adopted and amended. Excuse me. Vote with your lights. Uh, I had a second from Mr. Falconer. <coughs> Mr. 
Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4689, ordinance amending the official Paris zoning map to reclassify 1.3 acres from A1A to uh, PF1. This is in Ward 10, District 6. Mr. Tanner. So moved. Second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4690, ordinance amending the official Paris zoning map to reclassify 0.88 acre from A1A to PF1, Ward 10, District 6. Mr. Tanner. So moved. Second by Mr. Thompson again. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4691, ordinance amending the official Paris zoning map to reclassify 0.34 acre from A4A to uh, MD1, Ward 8, District 14. Mr. Smith? Moved to approve. Second by Mr. Arteague. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4693, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 1.5 acres located from uh, A2 to uh, located from A2 to A2 with the mobile home overlay, Ward 6, District 6. So moved. Second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4700, ordinance to amend parish code, ordinances, drainage, and flood control regarding Dub Park subdivision area of special concern. Need a motion? So Mr. Belisario, second by uh, Mr. Falconer. Vote with your lights, please. Mr. Sorry. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4702, ordinance amending the official Paris zoning map to reclassify 36,740 square feet from A3 to A3 with the mobile home overlay, Ward 7, District 7, Mr. Groby. Uh, no, item number 8, 4702, ordinance to amend the official Paris zoning map to reclassify 36,740 square feet from A3 to A3 with the mobile home overlay. You have a motion, second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights, please. With a correction from Mr. Grabby, motion is unanimous, two absent. <laughs> ordinance calendar number 4704, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 1.26 acres from A2 to A2 with a mobile home overlay, Ward 3, District 3, Mr. Thompson. Second by Mr. Dean. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4705, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 1.04 acres from A4A to A4A with a mobile home overlay. This is Ward 8, District 14. Mr. Smith. Move to adopt. And second by Mr. Arteague. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4707, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 3.872 acres from A1 to A2, Ward 2, District 3, Mr. Thompson. Second by Mr. Falconer, or was that Tanner? Tanner, vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4708, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 4.72 acres from A1 to A2. This is in Ward 2, District 3, Mr. Thompson. Second by Mr. Falcon in this time. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4709, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 13,500 square feet from A4 to A4 and mobile home overlay, Ward 8, District 9. Second by Mr. Smith. Vote with your lights, please. 
Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4711, ordinance to extend for six months the moratorium on multifamily structures in Council District 12. We need a motion, Mr. Ortiz? And second by Mr. Smith. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4712, ordinance to extend for six months the moratorium within the town of Alton subdivision. This is in Ward 9, District 14. Mr. Smith? Motion to adopt and second by Mr. R.T. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number, number 4713, ordinance to extend for six months the moratorium within Dove Park subdivision, Ward 4, District 5. Need a motion, Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Belisario. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4714, ordinance to enact parish code of ordinances, article 11, section 16-160, uh, setting forth rules and regulations for the St. Tammany Parish Fishing Pier. Mr. Arteague, second by Mr. Belisario, vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Okay, ordinance calendar number 4715, ordinance to amend the boundaries of the St. Tammany Parish Lighting District number seven. Arteague and Belisario, vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4716, ordinance to authorize the parish president to acquire from Louisiana Land Trust and or road home corporation certain parcels, rights of way, and or servitudes. Second. Motion by Mr. R.T. and second by Mr. Belisario. Vote with your lights. Ordinance calendar number... Oh, sorry. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, ordinance calendar number 4717, ordinance to correct the road and drainage inventory to include uh, Country Club Drive Lateral. This is Ward 4, District 4. Move to table. Move to table, second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, under nominations, resolution to appoint four members to the Board of Commissioners of the St. Tammany Rec District, number 16. Let's move to the table. Uh, Make a motion to table. I've got a person who's considering one of the positions, and she wants to be able to see the map first. Okay, and second by Mr. Smith, the table. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, a resolution to appoint one member to replace Peter Link on the finance authority of the St. Tammany Parish. Mr. Stefanczyk? Table. Second by Ms. O'Brien? You, you take this. Okay, <laughs> second by Ms. O'Brien. Vote with your lights. <laughs> Didn't want you to feel neglected over there. <laughs> Mr. Thompson? Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, resolution to appoint, reappoint nine members to the uh, Parish Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, we had 10 nominees. The, the floor is still open. Uh, does any, uh, are there any other additional nominees to be put forth by any council member? Okay, I need a motion to close I'll the floor. I move, move to uh, close and uh, close the floor. adopt the resolution. Okay, so floor is closed. We can only, uh, we got to close the floor to nominations and then we'll vote. Okay. Okay, that's the motion. Second by Mr. Smith, I believe. All right, vote with your lights to close the nominations. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, we have 10 nominees. We have nine slots to vote for. Um, you're going to make a copy? Yeah, no, I Do we have copies? We have copies for you to, to mark and pass out. We'll go ahead and vote, vote the copies, and then we'll move on to the next, next item.
after you've voted, I'd ask you to pass, pass your vote down to uh, Mrs. Ford so she can tabulate. And we'll move on with the, the, the rest of the agenda. They're going to tab? Okay. Nine. Here you go. Thank you. All right, under discussions and other matters, motion to reconsider Ordinance Council Series number 11 2646, Ordinance to authorize parish president to purchase or otherwise acquire certain parcels, rights of way, and or servitudes located in Little Creek subdivision. I'm going to ask that this be tabled because the issues that we tabled it for in the first place have not been resolved. Motion, I mean, motion by Stefancic, second by Mr. Belisario. Vote on the table, please. Mr. Stefancic, uh, I have a question for him. Oh, okay. Mr. Stefancic, um, we opened off the floor items. Do we have to open it again? Because we never closed it. You're going to have to open the off the floor items again. again. Yes. Okay. Mr. Right. Stefancic, I need your vote on the last. I'm sorry. Yes. Motion is unanimous, <clears throat> two absent. Okay. Uh, you opened it only for the one item. That's correct. Recall. That's correct. That's, that's why I got you there, man. You keep me out of trouble. <laughs> All right, I need a motion to open the off the floor items, and it has to be unanimous. So moved. Smith and Stefancic, vote with your lights to open the off the floor. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, first item is the motion to refer to the Zoning Commission for recommendation of proposed rezoning of two acres located south on South Fitzmaurice Road from A1 to A2, Ward 2, District 2. Mr. Sharp, second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights on the motion to refer. I recommend. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Next item is a resolution to vacate in part moratorium establishing established by ordinance calendar series number 08-1889 on the issuance of building permits for construction or placement of building structures on property within a portion of the unincorporated town of Alton subdivision to release lots 17, 18 uh, on 16th Street. This is in Ward 8, District 14. Mr. Smith? Move to approve. Second by Mr. Arteague. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, resolution to vacate in part the moratorium established by Ordinance Council Series number 08-1889 on the issuance of building permits for construction or placement of building structures on property with, within a portion of unincorporated Alton subdivision to release lots 4 and 11 on 14th and 15th streets. This is in Ward 8, District 14. Mr. Smith? Move to approve. Second by Mr. Arteague again. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, item number four, resolution to vacate in port, mo, part of the moratorium establishing, established by Ordinance Council Series number 8-1889 eight, eight on the issuance of building permits for construction or placement building structures on property within a portion of unincorporated town of Alton subdivision to release uh, 0.5, a half acre, on 12th Street and 2nd Avenue. Ward 8, District 14, Mr. Smith. Move to approve. Motion, second by Mr. Stefanczyk. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, a resolution to authorize the parish president to execute an act of correction to the developmental agreement with Arbor Holdings, LLC. I need a motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Groby. Vote with your lights on that, please. Mr. No. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, resolution stating the parish council's support including uh, for including the lighting of the, the I-12 Highway 1088 interchange in the Regional Planning Commission's Metropolitan Transportation Plan and Transportation Improvement Plan Program. Mr. Groby? Turn your mic on. I'd like to have the council support on this. We've been trying for quite a while to get this area lit up. And this is a, a primary first step in order to do it. I think it's a good idea. So we have a motion and second by Mr. Thompson. Question. 
Mr. Stefanski? We can put that into the tip, and I think that Pat and myself and uh, Breed can work that. But the issue that, that, that I'm going to ask you is do we have the funds for maintenance in a lighting district because there is no maintenance from the, from the state or federal government for lighting once we put We do have a lighting district in that area. Do we? That's my concern. Okay, do we have to, let me ask you, in order to amend the boundary, uh, we're going to have to have an election or is this take in area that's, we don't have voters? Yeah, that's exactly right. No voters. So it takes a simple, we simple need, amendment. I, I just wanted to make sure we understood we can put it in there, but you know we can't. Right. You're not going to have any way of maintaining it if, it, if even if I, we get as it. As I understand, it's not the you're district need now. need a funding mechanism to pay <coughs> for it, but because there are uh, and, no and voters, I think we need to do it. But yeah. let's I, take. I think we need to do it. We got to figure out how to. How to yeah, pay let's for take a shot at it and figure out how we're going to pay for it. Make sure we understand how we're going to pay for it. Pay for the maintenance. Okay. Exactly. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, do we have any other, do we have any other off the floor items? Mr. Dean, you wanna state, state that? Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion to refer to the Zoning Commission for recommendation the proposed rezoning of a parcel located on the south side of Highway 22, 1.088 acres of a 21.368 acre tract from A2 to Mobile Home Overlay. Okay, does anyone else have an off-the-floor item? Do we have a question on an off-the-floor item? Not until we've got a motion, on the, uh, motion and a second on the floor, and then, we'll, then we have to vote unanimously to open it up. Okay. So I have a motion. Do we have a second on the motion? What, wait, the motion wait, is. Wait a minute. What me. is her question? I mean, she's got a question. You should address it. It's about resolution two. That's my concern. Is I think it's something we already passed. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I can let me do this, okay. Mr. Dean. Go ahead and hold back on that for now. And yes, ma'am, come to the come to the microphone. My name is Linda Foreman. Yes, ma'am. There are several of us from Quail Creek neighborhood and, right. and the surrounding areas. A lot of us are not here. But you just <laughs> voted to approve the resolution. But then what about this amendment and you're going to decide something on maintenance? How does that No, stand? we didn't have an amendment. What we were discussing is we can get it. Mr. Stefanski can get it in the TIP program. We can, we can get the construction. But it, it comes to down. It comes down to after that, how we maintain that once it's constructed, uh, and how we pay for uh, maybe even the lights themselves. Whether whether or not I think the, the the lighting district can pay for that part. It becomes a question of maintenance. Whether or not we can do it, that particular area may not be, if I understand correctly, is, is not in actually in the lighting district. That's my concern. So when do we find this out, and how do we know that something's going to happen with it? Well, where does it go from here? Well, from here it goes to, to the Regional Planning Commission to see if they'll, they'll accept it, mm -hmm. put it into the TIF program. Once we find out, uh, you know, whether they're going to do it or not, then I'm sure Mr. Groby will be given that information, and it's up to him to get with you to let you know what's, what's happening. Okay, so and then we'll the also thing. try to find a way to to maintain the lights. But as of right now, I don't know how that would happen. Okay, knowing that it's not probably not in the lighting district. That was my thoughts. Is it wasn't, and if it's not in there, we have no way of maintaining the lights once we get them put up. So, what we got to do is work the issue of trying to find the maintenance monies for that. And so. these are just the lights that are at the interchange, correct? Yes, yes ma'am, just Because we are very, very concerned about the lights that are going down 1088 all the way to Salt and continuing on to the school and to 59. Right, well that, that has nothing to do with what we just what worked on okay. just now. I think that you, you've had some conversation with Mr. Groby, he's had conversation with me. We're moving forward with trying to get those lights installed on 1088. 1088. Uh, primarily at the intersections of all the all the 
the uh, other roads wherever we can get them put in. Exactly. So we're, we're pursuing that. Yes, What can we do as a neighborhood to push that along? Well, you've done that. You've done that. You've made a request. We've put it in, and it's now in the hands of the administration to start working through it and get the process started and get it done. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My name is Paige Decker. I'm the president of Quail Creek. Um, my question is, if it's not in a district, um, would it have to go to a vote of the people, the residents of the parish, in order to no, redistrict? No, no. We have to go to, we've, we're going to probably have to amend the lighting district to put it in or find some other method of funding it, and we'll try to find a way to do that in the meantime before we can put that in the lighting district. But that's probably what will happen. Otherwise, you're going to have to vote on it over some period of time, and it's going to take a year or two to get that done. I, I would tell you that even putting it in the tip, now it's not going to happen tomorrow. Under, understand when we go through the RPC to get the funding and everything, we go through the state and the federal government to get that money sent back down here, so it doesn't happen overnight. And that uh, deadline, I think, because I had, was like this, um, February 14th, I think is the deadline to get that information into the TIP we're, we're, program. We're approving the final TIP uh, next Tuesday for St. Tammany, so we'll look at that and make sure it gets in there. I think that's where we are with it. And when you said the amendment, that would be the council would approve an amendment? No. No, no the Regional Planning Regional Commission. Regional Planning okay. Commission. And, that's and who's going to meet on Tuesday. Okay. Right. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. I'm sorry. It's a week from Tuesday. It's a week it's from a week. Tuesday. I'm, right. I missed the date. It's the second Tuesday of the month, whatever that is. Okay. I believe uh, the ninth. Yeah, something like the ninth. So. Okay, Mr. Dean. No, you, how about the seventh? How about the fourteenth? Fourteenth. The fourteenth. I'm sorry. The fourteenth, February fourteenth. Mr. Dean, you wanna? You have a motion to open up off the floor for the stated item that you have. Right. No, I'm okay, we have a motion. I need a second from Mr. Thompson. This takes a unanimous vote. Vote with your lights, please. You ladies will see me after the meeting. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay, Mr. Dean, you got approval to move on this? Motion to approve the stated item. You want to read it again? We know what it is. It's a uh, rezoning. Read <laughs> I think y'all just missed I was me paying attention. Is motion to refer to the zoning right. commission. Just remove the refer. Are y'all paying attention? <laughs> For second. recommendation, the proposed rezoning Preferred. of a parcel located on the south side of Highway 22, 1.088 acres of a one, I mean of a 21.368 acre track from A2 to Mobile Home Overlay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second, uh, Mr. Thompson? He, All right, we have a motion and a second. Vote with your lights. I want to see this one. <laughs> right. He didn't say that. He didn't motion say that. is unanimous, <laughs> one absent. Okay. Uh, seeing no other items, any other items fall off the floor? No. Okay. All right, come on, guys. Let's, we got one last little piece of business and we can get out of here. All right, I'm going to announce the, um, the, the uh, people who have been chosen for the uh, upcoming term of the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission. Uh, Mr. Jay Delahousie, Mr. Ray Bernie Willie, uh, Ms. Martha Casabon, Mr. James Davis III, Mr. William Matthews, Mr. Mark Hines, Mr. Dave Doherty Jr., Mr. Richard Mackey, and Ms. Celeste, Celeste, all right, tell me how to pronounce this one. I don't, Quaracy, thank you, sir. Uh, those will be the uh, nine appointees of the council, and we need to, to move on a resolution by Mr. Dean, that the resolution is for the appointment, second by Mr. Stefanczyk, Mr. Stef uh, Savant, you have a question. Yes, sir. Um, the uh, effective date or when they will begin their office, um, will it be immediately or will it be um, at the, um, the March meetings? And, and the reason I ask is because we well, still... Well, it needs to be specified. Let's, 
I think with, with we should wait till uh, President Brister puts her two on. Well, well, first of all, I think most of these people are already on there, so they're going to serve until replaced. Right. And and I would like to see them all together when they do decide to select their chairman, vice chairman, rather than do that at the first meeting without her appointees on there. So that March? March would be, I mean, I think effective in March because if they started now, they're effective immediately, they got to meet next week and they're not. I mean, we got two know, new members. To some extent, if there's any, I don't think there's any new ones. If there is new members, then it's it would be. Two. I'm sorry, two. Yeah. So they need, you know, give them time to get some understanding of what's going on before they put it in there, unless you have a problem with that. Well, path. I just, I would ask if you are waiting for, for mine too, it would be yeah. April. I just wanted to, you know, we'll get some names at the end of February, so it won't be until April. Right. So, so okay. right. So um, the motion, the motion is to appoint, uh, or the resolution is to appoint effective, appoint or reappoint effective March first. Yes. And that gives them the March Mr. Smith to start with. All right. Second by Mr. Smith. Let's vote on the appointments, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. There are any other business come before this council? Motion to adjourn. Second.